everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new playthrough. I hope you've been enjoying your time at home as best as possible, or at least trying to make the best of it, as I know we all have, uh, during these uh, interesting and challenging times. But, you know, I've been meaning to tackle this game for a while, and you saw what it was in the intro, so I need to go into detail on it. But uh, I wanted to tackle it after a lot of people were able to play it and maybe see some of the story elements themselves and everything, because I, I do plan to spoil the heck out of this thing during this playthrough. So, um, there's your warning. That's the only warning I'm going to give you, and that is that this is going to be a spoiler-filled playthrough, because I'm going to try and play through as many chapters as I can. Now, something interesting is I was actually trying to play this as well with Barrett from Meet Me at the Table, but we were having some technical challenges and agreed to mosey on and, and try to work something else out where we're going to play a game together online or with, for you guys or whatever. But this one did not work out. So that is unfortunate. It would have been fun, but we're going to just tackle it on our own. And uh, I did the prelude before, but now we're going to play the actual like chapter series. And uh, there are multiple parts to this chapter. So I hope you enjoy it. We're going to now, I like to torture myself. And this is a game with a lot of fiddly comp complexity. Though it's a great game, don't get me wrong. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a role-playing game with a lot of stuff and stats and cards and interesting combat, and, and so um, I, I, do, I do plan to try and make as few mistakes as possible, but you know, it is what it is. But when I say I'm going to torture myself, it's because I'm going to play a full three-player game. I, I was going to do four players, and I realized just space-wise and everything, I was going to be too much. So we are going to play a three-player game of Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. I am prepared to do, at minimum, the first full chapter, um, and see how that goes, right? Uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully to go a little further. Now, just to give you, uh, I'm going to go into some inter introduction stuff and some rules explanation in a moment, but I wanted to say that the men here, here, which basically fuels the magic of the realm, uh, is, I have it off to the side here, so it's not actually on the card, but it is technically on this card right here. That's why I have it kind of facing that direction. Now, what is the story of Tainted Grail? If you don't already know, we are not the heroes, okay? We are characters who watch their their heroes and mentors and legends go off to find uh, the king during this terrible time in Avalon where the magic is failing and this, this power called the weird is coming in and, and distorting time and, and mutating things and just making it awful for everybody. And the only thing keeping it at bay are these, these powerful statues, magical statues called men here. And that's what this is right here. And there's one in the village we're starting in. And again, none of us are heroes. And you're going to get to hear more about that in just a moment. But I just want to set the stage for you. We are not the heroes. The heroes have left and they have not returned. And now something must be done because the men here's power is fading. And I love the story of this. It's very dark. It's very gritty. But it, uh, it should be a lot of fun for us. So why don't we, uh, now that I've just gone, gone over that, I am going to do some rules explanation just lightly. And what I'll do is, and I'm going to do this playthrough, it's very story driven, but what I want to do with the playthrough is when I first do something, a new rule or something like that, I'll try and explain it in as much detail. And then after that, I want to try and keep it as thematic as possible and not tell, not, not go through a bunch of rules explanations. So like I said, the first time we do combat, the first time we do diplomacy, the first time we do an encounter of any kind, we, I'll go through it in more detail. The first time we go through the phases, all that good stuff. Okay. Now, that, all that said, let's dive right in. I hope, uh, hope you're uh, ready for this, uh, this playthrough. And again, I'm going to leave you with spoiler filled. This is going to be all spoilery, alert, alert, alert. If you don't, if you haven't played the game and you intend to, and you want to hear the story of these characters and what goes on, then watch no further because this anything I've told you up to this point is not a spoiler, but everything after this might be. So let's get started. We're going to get into the introduction and the setup. First thing we're going to talk about in the setup is our characters. I'm going to go over one character, then I'll just tell you the specifics of the others. Okay. So right now, right here we have Erev. Okay, now Erev is a big uh, scythe-wielding uh, warrior, Celtic-type warrior. In fact, all these characters are kind of based on, you know, the legends of Arthur and Celtic myth and that sort of thing. But um, one of the reasons I picked him out of the characters is because in my old role-playing, D20, D&D uh, &D role-playing game, one of the, the great heroes of the realm looked actually amazingly like this. <laughs> so, so um, 
he was he was from a uh, Celtic type realm where kilt had a big size. Anyway, so I picked this guy. But let's talk about this character specifically. Now, this player board is specific to him. Um, it uh, aligns with his character. Okay. Now, um, what does that mean exactly? Well, that means that this, some of this stuff is a little different on each character as well, or can be. Like for example, you can see here that only this top one is barred out, so his insanity is higher than some other folks. He can be a little more crazy, and he can get a little more uh, health out of that. And you'll see that they're slightly different. They're not tremendously different, but they're slightly different. So, what else you can do is pull this out. Now, you can, there's other characters in, that fit in the same color scheme as this one. This one is the, I think it's gray, right? And then green and then blue will be our characters. But the reason this is important, the reason you want to take this out is because this has the setup. And it tells you a little bit, just a little bit. We're going to look at more of this with RF, but it's the setup says, A simple farmer with not so, uh, not so simple past. Years ago, as a young mercenary, he helped raise many villages and shrines to the ground. Now a mysterious curse follows him. We'll talk about the mysterious curse. So when you, when you first set up your character, you pull this side over, and it tells you what your beginning stats are. So you have stats of aggression, courage, practicality, empathy, caution, and spirituality. And as you can see by this, we got one in, one in aggression on the lower side, one in courage on the lower side, and one in uh, practicality on the lower side. And then he's got one in caution, one in empathy, and nothing in spirituality. It also tells you he starts with two food, two food, one wealth, one magic. That's his setup. So once you've done this part of it, and you read the little story, you flip it over and you set it back in here, and it tells you the rest of what he's got going on during the game. Having a problem fitting that back in, don't know why. There we go. Okay, and you can see that he's got, Arif has a, a special ability, it's called foraging. He can spend two energy, this is energy right here. You see that you have so much right now, six before he it becomes exhausted, or actually five before he becomes exhausted. And for that, he can gain a food. So he's not going to ever be struggling for food. He has to be out of a settlement, though. You know, my professional studio, the kids make noise, dog barks, all that good stuff. Anyway, he won't struggle for food too much, but... All, the other thing about these characters, they're not the heroes, right? And they always have something wrong with them. So, Arev is cursed. It says, when activating a men here, and you'll see what that looks like when we do it, it's going to cost one more magic. Well, he doesn't have a lot of magic to start with, and he doesn't really have a good way to get it. So we're going to have to work on getting magic. And he's the only magic character that I have. I did not take uh, the other highly magic character, Maggot. So he's got a little bit of magic, but not much. He's also more of a, a fighter. Uh, so that gives you uh, the basics. Now, some stats. Okay, having some dog problems. Sorry. All right, well, where was I? Okay, so here's here's the, the other main stat pulls. Now, this is your health tracker. The middle bar is your health, and this track will go down. And as you see, it's got these red bars that will block the other ones going back up. And when you rest, they will recover to some degree or decline to some degree. For example, your madness. Um, if you ever, if this, for example, is ever here, for just to get as an example, and your madness, uh, your insanity terror actually goes over that and becomes higher than this bar, you become panicked, and that's a bad, bad thing. You don't want it to happen. So we're going to try to avoid that at all costs. Also, this will lower your health, like your or your uh, energy, because the more wounded you are, the less energy you'll have. Now you can see he can actually end up getting all the way up to a plus three on his energy bonus. It's pretty good. We'll see how that works. Or there's there's bonuses for him if he can get up there, but we'll deal with that. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. We also see some decks of cards. You see four decks of cards out here. This is his combat deck, which we will use to fight with, and you'll see how that goes when we get into combat. Right underneath that is his combat advancement pool. These are all the cards that he can get. They're his, specifically, that he can add to his deck, and you see there's quite a few of them, uh, by using experience. Okay. Then uh, there, he's got a diplomacy deck, which allows him to do negotiations and things like that. And the same thing here. This is his advancement pool for diplomacy. You put these cards on top of it so you know which is which. Um, and the cool thing is you shuffle these decks every time, so it's not like you're keeping a discard pile or anything. And then when you add to them, you can also not take all the cards. You, can, you, you have to have at least 15 in your deck. I think initially you probably just keep a few extra, give yourself some options. But later on you might want to like call the deck a little bit. So next up we have Aaliyah, and uh, she is uh, a healer, right? You can see that the same thing, now we'll pull her card out and tell her a little story, just to give you a little bit. There's going to be more story in just a moment, but it says, An outcast whose entire family perished in the weirdness. She makes a modest living supplying healing herbs and roots to the locals. That's it. And you can see her stats. She starts with three food and one reputation. I mean, she's got a better rep than most, 
but uh, those are her stats. So she's got one courage, one practicality, two empathy, and one caution. It's pretty good. I don't have any characters with spirituality. That's going to be interesting. Um, there's her three food and her reputation point, and then you can see her stats there. She's got, actually got a very high level of energy, seven. Uh, Arab has six, for example, and she can uh, her, but her also her stat blocks are a little different. Like she, this is blocked here at six, where Arab can go up to seven uh, before he's uh, going completely insane, and he she only has one um, uh, bonus here for up here. Okay. Now, her special abilities is she can create healing herbs for two energy. She can restore health. And uh, that's to you or another character in your location, only out of the settlement. So she can't do it in the settlement. You have to be out of the settlement. You'll know what that means when we look. Uh, and traumatized. You can reduce terror when resting. You can't reduce terror when resting in a location without an active men here. So she's traumatized by the experience that her family had and the weirdness. And that's her basic curse. Yeah, and again, she has a combat deck that is asymmetrical. It's very different in a diplomacy deck than the other two characters. That's one, one of the things that I really like about this game. Lastly, we have Bjor. Now, he, he's he been on a bunch of playthroughs. I think more than these other two that I've seen, anyway, because he's kind of one of the basic characters. And if you play the computer game, he's one of the basic characters there, too. There is a computer game for this, though it's different. Uh, same theme, same, same philosophy. But he starts with three food and one wealth. Let's take a look at his card real quick. It says, I'll just back it up so you can see it. There you go. Um, Bjor, a local smith known for short, uh, short temper and incredible strength. He does his best to conceal a festering, unhealable wound in his side that he received under mysterious circumstances. Uh, he starts with three food and one wealth. He's basically strong. He's got two aggression, one courage, one practicality, and one caution. So he's a little cautious. Don't know why. Seems because he's got a bad temper. But his ability is craft. It says, uh, for four energy, we can draw a random craftable item and pick one. It's pretty good. Only in a settlement. And he's also got this festering wound. It says, lose one health every time you become exhausted. So we really can't let him become exhausted. He's got to stay healthy. And then, of course, you see his combat and his deck there. There's more to do. So that, that's the setup of the character. That's how they work. And uh, then we'll go. I'll go quickly over the uh, game turn, and then we'll start. Here is the game turn overview. It says order of the day. Now every turn takes place in basically a day. So you st we're going to pick start our day uh, by removing expired men here and uh, and discarding locations that the men here is uncovered and protected. We'll see that later. Uh, we can't let this last men here go out. That's for sure. We're going to reduce all the time on the men here dials. We'll show you what that, I'll show you what that looks like, of course, and remove time tokens that are on cards. Uh, that's when we have time tokens on things that say they're going to happen the next turn. We'll remove them, and if we remove them, we usually activate at that point in time. Um, okay, then we reveal the next event card. We'll we'll see that in just a very short shortly. And then we're going to move guardians if there are any on the board. And then we're going to pick active items and secret cards. That means we're going to pick the items and things that we're going to be using during that day because you might have two two sets of armor, for example, but you can only wear one, so you have to stash the other, basically. And then during the day, we're going to perform all our actions. That's the meat and potatoes of the the, the gameplay for the characters. Okay. And then we're going to have our end of day where we rest. You see we have to consume a food to restore one health and lose one terror. Uh, if you don't have any food, it's bad. So we've got to make sure we keep food around. Uh, we restore all of our energy unless we didn't have food. Uh, if you're exhausted, restore four points instead. So we really want to not become exhausted. Of course, there may be circumstances where that's unavoidable. We're going to advance our characters by expending experience points at that point, And that allows us to modify our decks. If we're in a location with a dream icon, we're going to read a dream or perhaps a nightmare. If you're going insane, read the nightmare instead, but uh, start the next day. Now there's uh, one character that flips a coin, That's but we're not over whether or not they get a dream or a nightmare. We're not playing that character. Uh, action overview, the things you can do, and we'll go over them in detail as we play. We can explore, we can travel, move. Uh, we can take a, we can activate the location, take the action there. We can inspect the men here, take a look and see what we need to do to keep the men here going. Uh, and then we can do character secrets, actions, the items, or pass. Okay, uh, you'll see there's lots of things that go on during this period in the game, but that's the, that's basically the overview of each day. Now we are playing uh, Chapter 1. This is the setup for Chapter 1. doesn't give any, any information on here other than setup, so there's no story on this card or anything like that. It just tells you what to do. And I have done all of that, so that means I've prepared the encounter decks and prepared the, uh, the um, 
chapter one quest or storyline or event cards for the chapter. And uh, that's where we'll be starting very shortly. But before we do that, we got one more thing to look over and then we'll get going. So the characters that we're playing, they're, they're, they're mentors and partners were friends, whatever, were the heroes that left the village and in some cases left them behind. And so each of the, the main characters, actually all the characters in the game, come with a letter from their mentor, friend, etc. We're going to take a look at those. I am going to, to read them, so that will be a big part of this first episode before we start taking turns. But let's do that, and then, we'll, then after that we'll get right into the first turn. So the first one we're going to look at is Aaliyah. I'm going to take her little note out, and you can see it's on a, like a little piece of parchment, and you can see that there. Okay. My dearest apprentice, how I regret what little time we had for your education. I was forced to leave town before I could pass on even a fraction of the knowledge you deserve. Though the fact you'd rather spend time in, a, in the meadows than in the temples certainly did not help. Know this, the sagas of old are true. Our island once belonged to twisted, immortal powers. Avalon was not created for humans. But Arthur, the first of the kings, who landed on these shores with our people, subdued this realm inch by inch. He took the grail from the four dwellers and used it to bring seasons and cycles known from our world to this godless place. We all thought the men here in our village was raised to immortalize this. The truth is, it was created to keep these ancient powers out, anchoring the islands to the world of mankind. Now the men here go dark, and we will soon follow them into oblivion. Thus, Lord Yvain secretly gathered the five strongest and wisest champions, including me. He leads us east to seek help in Camelot before it's too late. Before the land fragments and sinks into the weirdness. If we do not return or send word in thirty days, it means we have failed. And the fate of Kunak falls to you. Yvain thought you too unstable to go with us. And my runes foretold you would not return alive if you did. But alone, you might stand a chance. Save our people or... If you cannot, try to save yourself. And always remember, to me, you were the daughter I could never have. Stay safe. Niante, priestess of Kunat. That is her story. So, as you can see on this first day, Aliyah woke up and read this note from her mentor, her, her teacher. But now we're going on to Arev. Arev, anyway. Uh, my friend, I know your secret. I realize you're no farmer and that you settled here to run from something. I know how it feels to be haunted by your past deeds, to leave your old life behind. I also know a fighting man when I see one, and I believe that should I fail, you are this town's second best chance. Know that Avalon once belonged to a twisted immortal, immortal powers. It was not a place for humans. Arthur, the once and future king, subdued this realm inch by inch. He took the grail from the four dwellers and used it to bring laws, the laws of our world, to this godless place. People of the village believe their men here was raised to immortalize this. The truth is, it was created to keep the ancient powers out, to anchor Avalon to the world of mankind. Now the men here go dark, the laws of nature unravel one by one. Yord Levain secretly gathered five people, including me. He leads us to the east to seek, the, seek help in Camelot. I wanted to take you with us, but the others feared the misfortune that seems to follow in your footsteps. But if we don't return, it means our luck wasn't any better. Should the worst come to pass, I implore you, take up arms once again and save our people. Fail, Master Huntsman of Kunat. So that was a friend of Erev. Last but certainly not least, we have a letter to Bjor from Enfir, his, his uh, forge master. It says, Bjor, you're always a good lad and a great help. I would have closed the forge long ago if not for the strength of your arms and your resolve. I feel I owe you something. When I told you to stay in Kunak to keep an eye on my property, I misguided you. The forge is already lost, just like the rest of our land. The sagas of old are true. Our island once belonged to twisted immortal powers. It was not a place for humans, but Arthur, the first of the kings who landed on these shores with our people, subdued Avalon inch by inch. He took the grail from the four dwellers and used it to bring some, some seasons and cycles known from our world to this godless place. We all thought the men here in our village was raised to immortalize us. The truth is, it was created to keep the ancient powers out. Now the men here go dark. Something is broken. Spring will not come. The animals won't breed. Lord Yvain secretly gathered five, the five strongest and wisest people of Kunakt, including me. He leads us east to seek help in Camelot before it's too late, before the land starts sinking into the weirdness. If we don't return, it means we have failed, and the fate of Kunakt falls to you. Yvain did not 
want you with us due to your lack of experience and short temper, but I have always believed in you, lad. Save our people, or if you cannot, try to save yourself. And fear, Forge Master of Kunak. And you can tell that there is a theme. They all wrote these together, apparently, because they all said something very similar with some different twists for our characters. But here is the basic map of the area. We're starting here in Kunok, and you can see that there's different locations. This map might help us later, but you can see some landmarks that were scribbled on there. I'm sure we'll get to see quite a few of them during our adventures, but that is a basic map of the land. Okay, I think it's time to get started, guys. So let's get on with our, our first turn, our, our start of the day. Okay, so the first thing that we do is we remove any expired men here, but we don't have one. And I do want to show you this a little closer. Absolutely beautiful miniatures, and I have the sun-dropped version, so they're they're not necessarily painted, but they are. I, I hate unpainted miniatures, and I always have them because I don't have time to do it. So I did the sun drop, and it, I mean it's really beautifully done. So anyway, that is the men here in our village. The most important part is this. You can see it's on six right now, and we already have to turn it to a five because that's the next thing that happens during the day is our men here starts to lose power. So that is remove the, the uh, it says uh, reduce all time on the men here. Then we would remove time tokens, we don't have any, and then we're gonna reveal the next event card. Being that this is day one, chapter one, part one, we're going to first reveal the event for the day and see what we get. So let's flip that over and take a look. Okay, it says place this card on top of the active quest pile. We've done, done that already. It says. And this is just some stats. It says, Ancient Knowledge. The time is short. The guardian men here that has been protecting your town since the ancient days is about to go dark. Rumor has it that there is a secret druidic ritual, ritual that may help you rekindle the men here. You must explore the location surrounding Kunak to, to find it. So we have a quest. That's why this is going to stay on top. Earn a men here right secret card. To do so, you'll have to explore locations surrounding Kunak, location 101. So if we succeed, as soon as you have the main here rights, resolve chapter 1, part 5 card from the event deck and discard this card. Remember not to change the structure of the rest of the deck. Hint, if this is your first game, try to return to Kunacht at the end of the day and spend a night to read the dream, as dreams office often contain hints. That is our first event, and that means we get started with our day. So... Uh, event card one has been revealed. And then we're going to move any guardians. We don't have any. And then we're going to pick items and secret cards. And we don't have any. What does that mean for our three intrepid adventurers? Well, that means that it's time to start our day. So let's uh, get on with our day turn. So it's going to be the action phase for the characters. Now, there is no particular turn order. Turn order. We take an action and then take an action for a different character. Then all three characters take their action. Then we can go again in any order we want. Go back to back at that point, however we want to do it. Now, we do know that we do, we're going to need to figure out how to uh, recharge and get that druidic ritual to take care of the men here. Um, one of the things that suggests you do in the start of the game is maybe investigate the town that you're in. Or we can do a lot of things. But remember that we have this set of things that we can do. Explore, travel take a location action, inspect them in here, etc. We're not going to expect the, inspect them in here yet because we really don't, we have to go get this uh, ritual and that's not going to help us to stand there and, and gawk at the men here, right? But we are in Kunok Village and I'm going to take a moment to show you the card up close. I'll try and show each one, but you know, I don't want to, they're going to have to pull them out of order. Now, there's stuff on the back that you can use, in, but it's also in the book and I'm going to use the book so that we don't have to continually be picking up the cards. So, what this is Kunok Farmhold, and as you can see on the image, there's a farm there, and it says that there is a dream. It is a, that green house symbol means it's a friendly settlement, and that means that there's a men here. Uh, there's men here information. There's a thing we can do in the village of Kunok. We can uh, do chores for the townspeople to gain a rep once per day, and it says it's history as vast as the, this, its graveyard, its future is as empty as its houses. That's real pleasing. So, um, you know, I don't think we'll take this action, but we could explore... Uh, Kunok as well. And that's not doing this. That's not the same as doing chores for the town folk. If we explore, we would be turning the town over basically to read what's on the back. But like I said, we're going to lose. We're going to use the, the book for that. There's a big book that allows us to do that without having to make a mess of our landscape. So I think who will go first? I think we'll go with 
Aaliyah. Um, she is our healer, and since she's not really a, an active fighter at this moment in time, I think what we'll do with her is she'll be the first one, and she's going to do an explore action. So what does that mean? Since she's not moving, she's just going to stay in Kunok, and she's going to explore. So what does that mean? Well, first off, she loses a point of energy, and she's doing this by herself. Even though the other characters are there, she's not. She's just going to do the explore action. She's wandering around. The other two are probably going to do something else. We'll take a look at that in a moment. So like I said, when you explore, you have basically two options available to you. You can flip the card over, and it does the same thing as this, even though it will reference you back to the book, or you can just use this section. It basically tells you the same thing. There's usually a couple of pages. So she explores. It says, a deep feeling of loss fills every everything in Kunat. From dilapidated farms to sunken eyes of those who remain in town, the many are in the market is all but extinguished, and everyone brave or resourceful enough has left to find a solution. If you have the Winds of Weirdness status, remove this location from the game and replace it with location 121. We don't. Then explore this location for free. We don't have any of that, so we're just going to continue on. If you have the Secret Cards, we don't. If you have the Hunter's Mark, we don't. Okay, otherwise, choose one. We can visit families of the champions from the first expedition. We can ask the town folk to help, uh, help you prepare. We can rest for a day at your own home. We can wander the alleys, and, uh, alleys twisted by the weirdness. Only if the men here model is not in this location. Well, it is. So, or we can leave and the exploration ends. So what will we do? We could visit the families of the champions. We can ask the townsfolk to help us prepare. I, I'm thinking of one of those two would be the best start for us. Let's go with, um, let's go with visiting, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Visit the towns, visit the families. So it says if you, if you're to find them, knowing more about them might help. Go to verse one. All right, we will do that. We're going to do that. Now, I haven't read any of this, and I hope you're not reading ahead on me. Don't. We're going to visit the families of the champions of the first expedition. Okay, and that is right here. This long winter, nearly everyone has lost a friend or family member. First to hunger, then to disease. Finally, the five remaining pillars of the community, the only heroes this land has ever known, suddenly left. Now, when you look into the distant eyes of the last remaining residents, you realize they want to forget. We have two options we can take here. We can loosen their tongues with mead. We can ask them to share their burden. Or we can, and that requires one, uh, empathy. Well, good, she's got empathy uh, out her ears. So we can go to verse 2, or we can leave. I think we'll, we'll ask them to share their burden. We're going to use their, their uh, empath empathy, our empathy ability, which she, again, she has two of, to uh, go to that solution. How do I know that? Well, here's the empathy symbol. You see the two red cubes in there. That means she has empathy. It requires one. She's got two. It takes a while to break the silence of the grief-stricken people, but when you do, stories of separation and departures flood you like torrential rain. You try to remember every detail, the color of the palfrey horse the of the village priestess Niante rode, the ornament on the hauberk that young Yvain wore, the strange drinking horn Earfear the smith used to lug around, the birthmark of, of Fail, the master huntsman. The embroidered cape of Albert, the seasoned traveler who has seen all parts of the island. Who knows what details can help you down the road? Gain part one, fate of the expedition, status, your exploration ends. So what does that mean? Now we're going to get into something a little bit different. This is a Tainted Grail save sheet. So when we get to the end of a chapter, we're going to use one of these sheets to save our progress. You can see there's a whole pad of them. But on the back, there are all these different statuses. And we're looking for the status fate of the expedition. Now they're in um, alphabetical order, so it shouldn't be too hard to find, I believe. So we're going to go here. There's fails, fall of charity, fate of the expedition. When you have parts one through eight of the status, go to, to BOS. That's the Book of Secrets, verse 405. We don't have that yet. So what we do have is we get to fill in block one, fate of the expedition. And that's the very first thing we've got. That's pretty cool, right? I love this game for that. Also ends our expedition with our, our exp exploration, rather, with Aaliyah. And now we're going to go on to another character's action. Remember, we get to use up all our energy, and then we're going to end our, our turn, our day, basically. So we got a lot of actions left to do for all of the characters, including Aaliyah. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take the other two, Arev and Bjorn. Uh, I'm sorry, Bjorn. I want to call him Bjorn because I actually know somebody named him Bjorn. Um, and we're going to do something else. I think we're going to head both of them... 
Uh, I think we're going to split them up. I mean, we got to get some things going right quick. So I think next we're going to go with a rev. And a rev is going to head north toward the Hunter's Grove. I'm going to let you take a look at that. You can see that there is a dream potentially there. You can also spend two energy to gain two food and draw one green encounter. It says in ages past, only the druids were allowed into the grove for good reason. This is now forgotten. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is take a travel action with uh, Erev. It says move to any reveal location connected to your current one. That's important because they're connected by numbers. So you can see in this location, for example, if we go to this location under Grove, we can go back to 101 or we can go to these two locations, which will reveal when he moves up there. However, if, there, if this was not there, we could not go that way, even though there is a location revealed uh, in that space. We could not travel. Okay. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's take that action and go. Okay, so I spent Arov's energy, and he is going to move up to this. This is his miniature right here. Just show you that quickly. You can see again, it's been uh, sun dropped, so it's not. It's got a nice uh, uh, detail on it. Really highly detailed miniature. Anyway, he's going to move up to Hunter's Grove, up to here. And as you can see, while there are some actions there, um, I think we're going to take that action now. Now, uh, moving. Doesn't I mean, again, you can go in any order you want. So we're going to take a break with uh, Aaliyah, and we're going to take this action to gain two food and draw a green encounter. So that's the thing that we're going to do right when we arrive. Well, let's play it right. It does say each player performs one action. So Arev's action was to move to Hunter's Grove while uh, Aaliyah was investigating uh, the town of Kunacht and hearing the, the uh, stories uh, about the people who left from the people that are left behind. So, we'll move on to Bjor next, and he is going to move south to the um, Forlorn Swords. These are giant swords in the landscape, sticking out, they're huge, sticking out of the landscape, as you can see there. Um, also, actually, when I moved up there, i got to do something first. got to place out the new locations, as I do here. Uh, but it says, pay one wealth to draw a craftable item. So, we can do that, but we're, we can also, uh, that's called visiting the smith shop. Um, and it says, sensing their own end, four dwellers ordered giants to push humans into the sea, but the giants abandoned their weapons here. Those are the big giant weapons. And we're just going to get there first off. There's no things that says when we enter we have to do something. So that is going to cost an energy from Biore. It puts him down to five, and he is now here. i got to get the locations out so I can reveal all the locations around the, uh, the, the new sites. Now, a men here... Uh, reveals and protects all locations that are one away from the men here. So if the men here is here, that includes, even though you can't move diagonally, it does include diagonal for his protection. And that means all of these would be re revealed. They would no longer be in the fog of the weirdness. So the first one we have is the uh, Four Dwellers Mounds. And that we'll look at that later, but it does have a dream site and a potential men here. That is going to go right here on this side. You can see it links to 102, so it tells you where it goes. Uh, next up, we have 107, which is the whitening. It is a hostile settlement, and that's what that red one means. Also has a dream, and also has some information on a men here. Here, when we go there, let's see that lightning bolt. That means that we are going to have something we have to do immediately upon arrival there. Though we haven't gone there yet. Okay. Uh, and then next up, I'm um, going to get rid of these start of day, all these other action cards, and we're going to go down to here. So we have to reveal 108, the Grubwood. You can see that that's right here, and it does connect to 105, so that means you can move from here to here, and that's fine. But there, we're also going to reveal the Island Asylum, which is going to go right here, and you note that there is no, and you notice how all of this connects into one big landmass. It's pretty, pretty sweet. But what you can see there is that there is no connection, so you cannot go from here to here. You have to go up and around. Okay, and that was the that that was the actions of the two characters reveal this great landmass. It looks like we're on the coast or near the coast rather, and uh, we have a lot we can do from here. So that was all three of the characters' actions. We still have bunches of actions to go, so we're gonna we're definitely gonna do them. I think uh, do we want to get into our first fight? Well, we can. Our first encounter, we, we can uh, do that with um, a rev. And since I haven't played, I have I've not played a rev at all. I don't know anything about his cards. I haven't even looked at him. How's that for? It? something. Uh, I think we're going to go to him next, and he is going to to do the action that is on the Hunter's Grove before he explores it, so we can get some additional food. Remember, we all need more food, because that's what sustains us at the end of the day. He's going to do this to gather food. We're going to spend two energy. We're going to gain two food, then draw a green encounter. 
Okay, let's do that. Here we are. We get two food at the cost of two more energy. So he's down down to three. He can't do much more there. He'll probably explore next turn and leave it at that. And then we're going to go do something we haven't done yet, which is have a an encounter. This is our encounter deck, and I have I've shuffled it up quite a bit. But uh, what we're going to do is I this first encounter. I decided to leave that on there just to go through with you how each encounter will work and how a, a combat will work. These are almost, well, they're not, I don't know if they're all combat encounters, but the ones I've seen have, have, have been. So let's take this card. We're going to flip it over and see what our first encounter is. I already know what it is. It's going to be this mist-shaped vermin. I'm going to get rid of the deck for the moment, and then we'll go over what that card does. And this is a green encounter, you know, by the gem in the bottom corner. Okay, just to, to let you know how this works, the first thing that we need to do is this shows that it's a mist-shaped vermin. These are the symbols that match our stats. You'll see that in a moment. But we need to get four of these to win. To, in other words, to defeat the vermin. Okay. Uh, we're going to do that by playing cards against these attributes to the side. And we're going to create a combat pool to this side of the damage that's taken. And then when we when we're, we can't play another card, the beast is going to go. And based on this right here, he, does, he takes four wounds. So it doesn't go any... There's no reason for it to go over four. Let's get that a little closer for you so you can see. If he has zero to two cubes on this side, he's going to take that action, which is do one wound to us. If he's a three, he's going to lose a cube. In other words, he's going to heal real quick. If we ever can't play a card on him over here during our turn, he's going to run away. He's going to bolt. And if we beat him, we get another food. That's really good. That would give five food to Arev. Here is the, the actions with which we begin, and here is Arev's combat deck. So, what does it say? It says first, and I'm going to shuffle this up just a little more, just in case I didn't shuffle it enough before. Um, just giving it a quick shuffle. It says, draw three cards from the combat deck. Four uh, characters draw two cards. That means that there's four characters in the encounter. But we only have one. So we're going to draw three encounter three cards from our deck. Then we're going to pick the active character. Well, we only have one. It's going to be a Rev. He's by himself. So, But we know he's a big, tough mercenary, so this should be fine, right? Yeah. Then we're going to look at the late abilities. We're going to play cards, and we're going to do all kinds of stuff. I'll show you how that works. But let's draw our three cards. So I'm just going to give it one more quick cut. We'll draw one, two, three. Now, you can mulligan. I'm going to put this, his deck right over here. We're going to look at our three cards, and then we're going to get to our our fight. Um, we might want to, Wow, we might actually want a mulligan. <laughs> These are really not great cards at all. The only thing about this one is we're going to get to draw... We're going to get to draw a card. These cards are not good, actually. I might just take that mulligan. I'm not happy with these at all. Well, they are in order. I thought I shuffled them enough, but I guess not. So we're going to discard those. We're going to take a bit of a mulligan. I'm going to break them up again and draw two more. So we get a uh, surprise attack. There we go. Now we're talking some damage. I'll put that one out there. We're going to get attack. Okay, good. So those now go to the bottom of the deck. The other cards go to the bottom of our deck. And we're going to get to play. The reason I did that is because those first cards had a lot of great activation abilities, but nothing that was helpful to us at all. This card is going to be incredibly helpful to us. Why? Because the first card you always play for for free. Now, if you saw the cards I pulled out before, some of them have a little card with a lightning bolt. To play an additional card, you have to be able to line up one of those cards with the lightning bolts with one of these stats. We're not going to get to do that, but we are going to get to do this one. We may kill him right away because we're going to play a surprise attack. Now, how that works is we're going to put that right there. Okay, now let's take a look. Now, um, actually, I think we're okay here. Look at this. This is really a good card. I, I didn't know Arev's cards were so great. This is going to stay in his hand for now. Uh, we're only going to get to play this one card, but it's going to be pretty devastating because we're going to activate everything but magic. He could actually activate the magic and kill him, couldn't he? Do we do that right off the bat? Just use up our magic and just kill this thing? I don't know how easy it is for him to get magic back. But let's just, just start going top to bottom. So the first one, aggression, there's nothing there. We don't have to worry about that. But the second one is courage. It requires a single courage, and we do have one. That means that we are going to get one cube for that. Okay. We also have um, practicality there. One level of practicality. It requires one level. Now, if, there were, if it required two, there'd be two symbols there, but it doesn't. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. You can see here that it has two aggression symbols. So we're going to pop that right there. And this is one of his basic cards, by the way. It's number 14 of 25. And then it's right here. It says we get another one. So right now we're at three. Okay. Because we get, now if this was up against this one, we get two, but we're only getting one times. So this is always free. We always get whatever's in here. That means he's already at three. So if I spend that, just that little bit of magic with this surprise attack, we can just kill this guy outright. I'm just worried about how easy it's going to be to get magic back. And I think 
but I'd rather not take... We can afford to take one wound, but however, if you look at the rat, at three he's going to lose a cube. I'm going to have to do another two next turn. Amy's going to hit his... He will not hit his back. He's not going to do any damage. I think we're going to conserve our magic. So, uh, then, then also, uh, it says, draw a card. So, um, and I think that symbol means, that little down arrow means it just happens right now. Because so, we surprise attacked him, right? So, it says down, move the marker. No, no, no. It uh, says, yeah, triggers when placed. Okay, so we're actually going to get to draw a second card. Let's see what that is. This might help us decide on what we're going to do next turn. Wow, I can play this card and kill him and not have to worry about using my magic. Why? Because it requires an aggression. We have that. Boom, it's right there. That says, if we have an aggression, we're going to get to take the, play this card. We can do it. It doesn't say we can't. Uh, then, um, actually, we can't because it would overlay that. No, that was on activation, not on a time marker. So we're okay. We're okay. We can play this. That means it's going to give us another... F yeah, we'll easily wipe him out. But this also means, this throw means that we're going to end the our, our combat. There's no choice, right? We could flip over a weapon or shield... Uh, we're using the game two more cubes, but that's not necessary. So we're going to take that, because this was drawn, it says draw on placement. So we placed it, we drew this other card that, that doesn't prohibit us from using it. So we're going to, and when we when do that, it slides in right here. So if this had a delayed effect, like something that would happen next turn, we would cover it up, we'd no longer have that ability. But we're going to place that right there. This first thing, like I said, gives us the ability to, to take a bonus action, because it has that great little uh, icon right there and then we do have another level of practicality and we have this bonus here before this combat ends that's more than enough to kill the rat in one turn that's the end of that combat the rat is kaput so that will go at the bottom of the deck for the beasties i think that one just comes out and we get a reward we get to loot loot there's a difference between loot and reward so loot means you get uh, re reward means everybody in the party gets if there's more than one player. But what this does give us is one additional food. So he's got five food now. That's a pretty good start for Erev. Good job. Okay, that is going to mark the end of his action. Now we're going to go on to one of the other players and take another action with them. Yeah, and it's just to give you the, the rules on that. It says right here, play any one combat card from your hand. That's any card. But any additional card, any number of additional combat cards, each additional card needs to be connected with the lightning bolt bonus action icon. After that, perform a victory check. We did that and beat him. Okay, so uh, we, did all, we didn't have to do any of these other things. We'll cross those bridges when we come to it. So at the end, we discard... So the end of our turn was also the end of the combat. So we discarded all our cards. They go back into our deck, and we shuffle them back up again. We shuffle the whole deck again. And then uh, we get the, the uh, reward. And if we're panicked, all these other bad things happen. But none of that's happening, so we're okay. And that, uh, just, that deck just goes back to Rev's slot there. And we're ready to go with this guy defeated. That was not a bad thing for good old Orev to do up in Hunter's Grove. He got some additional food and he was by himself so he just gets all the food. So right now everybody's got at least three food. That's going to help us out quite a bit. I think what we'll do is we're going to go to um, we're going to go to Aaliyah. I'm debating on whether she moves. I think she's going to move to another location as well. I'm just not sure where. She could go over to the Warriors Fair. I don't know what that does and explore that. Uh, we can go. We can spend four energy there to do a combat trial. We lose a uh, health, but gain an experience. I don't know if I, I like that deal or at all. But she can heal. I mean, she can spend two energy next turn to heal that back up. Plus, she's going to get the rest. So, four energy and one health might be worth it. I th okay, I think. I think she's going to move to the Warrior Fair. Hmm. What do you think, guys? Let me think about that for a moment. Actually, I've changed my mind. She is going to move up to the same location as um, as Erev because she's going to head, uh, one's going to head um, west, the other one's going to head uh, east there. So she's going to move up here. That's going to cost her one more energy, putting her down at five, and that's going to be her action. And then down here with Bjorn, we have him in this space, and I think what we're going to do with him is explore that space. And if you recall, an exploration action costs one um, energy, so he's going to spend that, puts him down, Puts him down to uh, four. He was at, at uh, six, down to five, and then down, down, down to four. And he's going to explore the Forlorn Swords, location 105. Okay, we spent his energy for exploring, and it says, You rest a while in the shade of titanic swords, their rusty smell causing your nose to tingle. 
A hundred yards away, an elder smith toils, chipping it at the jagged edge of a giant weapon. The hammer he uses to break apart the, this ancient steel seems very strange, as does the sound it makes. If there is a quest token on this location, go to verse 14. There is not. Otherwise, choose one. Attempt to climb the swords. Is that gold you see high up there on the pommel? Go to verse 1. Try to talk to the smith. Rest in the shades of the swords. I, I mean, obviously, we want to go talk to the smith. We're a smith too, right? That's why I sent him down there. So we're going to take the second thing. Talk to the smith. We're going to go to verse 2. Verse 2 is right here. Again, don't read ahead, please. Stay with me. If, unless you already know this, then it doesn't really matter. If there's a dial on this location, go to verse 3. There's not. Uh, if you're playing Bjor, yes, or if he's in your party, you know the smith. He and your missing master used to be friends. Go to verse 4. So we're immediately going to not do this. We're going to go here. You apologize to the man politely and then hang back, watching. Each strike of his hammer against the surface of the sword produces a sharp, tingling sound. This old steel was shaped not with a tool, but with a song, the smith explains after a while. It takes the same pitch to break it apart. This hammer I have, this hammer I have remembers the music of the four dwellers. After a while, the smith gathers rusty ingots from the, the grass and invites you to, to his hut where he shows you the rest of the process. If you don't have the Riddle of Old Steel status, each party member gains one experience. So there's only one party member, so that's going to be uh, Bjorn. So Bjorn is going to gain one experience. And then we're going to get our sheet out right here, and we'll mark that down. And we're going to mark the Riddle of Old Steel. So this box right here is now checked. Riddle of Old Steel right there. Yep. Boom. Okay, and then we're going to continue on. Uh, we don't have the Riddle of Old Steel, so we gain one experience points, gain the, then choose one. We can leave, we can attempt to buy the hammer, only if you don't have a uh, secret 27. We only have one wealth, though. I don't know if that would do well. We can attempt to steal the hammer, only if you don't have secret card 27. Pay from one to five wealth, then check the results on verse 8. I don't think one wealth is going to buy this guy's crazy hammer. We can roll a die, add plus one to each of the... So that would give us a plus one because we have one practicality. We have to gain a six. So we're going to have to roll a five. Uh, 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 I don't know. What do you think, guys? What do you think? We can leave. We can just say, hey, thanks for the riddle. I think we're going to have to take a chance on this hammer right here. Let me think about this. This is, could be bad. Okay. Um, we do have practicality, so we're going to get to add one to our die. Hopefully we, we roll a six total. Well, we rolled a six. Wow, I didn't even need a plus one. We rolled a six. That means uh, six gain a secret card 27 and the exploration ends. I'll go get that card out right now. There's a big stack of secrets. Um, and uh, some for some reason, they're all out of order in here. I haven't ordered them. So I'm going to have to flip through and find 27 and I'll be right back. Here is secret 27. Let's see what it is. It is the uh, weapon O-Steel Smasher 27. Gain a... Um, whatever I can't remember those tokens are called, the uh, battle tokens, at the start of each purple encounter. Okay, so when we have a purple encounter, that means a purple deck encounter, we're gonna, going to get a automatic hit on it with this cool hammer, and that means that Bjorn now has a weapon. It does, however, take the uh, item from the, the uh, smith, so that kind of sucks, but it is what it is, and uh, we needed that hammer anyway because we're trying to save the world, right? That's how we justify this. So Bjor did a little thievery. That was his turn, and that's going to be the end of all three of their actions. So we're going to come back around. I'm going to do one complete turn in most videos. I, I might wait here because this video might be getting a little long. I don't want it to be too long for you. But we could take another turn and get some people uh, here in about. Um, however, if we move to the next one with um, our guy a Arev, we're going to have an or whoever we're going to have an encounter if we move to to uh, the whitening. So. Do we keep going or not? Let me think. Yeah, I, th I think we can do one more uh, round of actions that probably put them all about to the point where they're going to rest anyway. So I think that what we're going to do with uh, Erev is we're going to move him. He's not such a diplomat. I think that uh, Leah seems like she'd be better suited for diplomacy. So we're probably going to move to, uh, be because it's asking, it says draw blue locate blue encounter. Blue encounters are diplomacy encounters. I know that from the uh, the prologue. So I think he's going to move here. It doesn't say he has to do anything, but it says, with the former masters of the island gone, no one is left to guard their burial treasures, hopefully. And it says, for we can go on a treasure hunt, gain one terror, one wealth, and roll a die. If the result is six, 
and go to verse 4. So that's not exploring, that's just doing a treasure hunt there. So I think Arev is going to go that way. Now remember, Arev can go pretty crazy, so I'm not too worked up about him. Of course, this is his miniature again, and he is just going to move there for the cost of one energy. That puts him at two. I think that's where he's going to have to end his day, because I don't want him to become exhausted. That's a pretty busy day, but he's there, and he, next level down he goes exhausted. So I think once he gets there, he'll probably rest. We've got to get somebody back to the village, though. I guess that'll be Bjorn. He can rest there and get that dream. Next up, we will have Aaliyah. She's going to take an action to move there. That's going to cost her an energy, putting her down to four. She's doing pretty good on energy. Um, and then she will have to have an encounter there, and I'll show you why she has to have that encounter again. So it says right here, draw a blue encounter when you enter this location. So she entered it. There is a dream to be had there. there is, this is a hostile village, which is probably why she has to do that. And there is something for a men here there. Plus, we can trade with the town folks and pay one food to gain a wealth. It says, once this place had another name and a busy market, today no one goes there. So it's just kind of this nearly abandoned place. But that's where, um, where Aaliyah has gone, and let's go get that blue encounter out. Okay, again, I'm doing it our first encounter so I can show you what our first diplomacy encounters. They all have a first encounter thing on it. Well, actually, I think only two of them do, don't they? No. All of them do, I guess. Yeah. Um, no, the green one doesn't, I think. Or did we already do it? We already did it. <laughs> so this is our first encounter. It's going to be, we're going to look, uh, talk to a suspicious guard. Now, this does go a little bit differently than the other encounters, and I'll show you that in just a second. Now, the first thing that we're going to do, unlike a combat encounter, this has a slider, right? And it shows you where the slider starts. And this grace says, start, put a marker right here. That's the starting space for this marker. Now, if we get it to the top, then we have won the diplomatic negotiation with the suspicious guard. If it goes to the bottom, we fail and we lose a reputation. But we're not going to fail, right? Because Aaliyah is probably a good dip diplomat. She always has a little bit of a reputation. So we're going to get this out in, the, in a... It basically follows the same pattern. I'm going to get the card out. Let me see uh, if I can find that card real quick and show you what that looks like. Here we go. Diplomacy overview. So it does the same thing. Draw three cards, four or four if there is, and that. And we're going to go through delayed abilities, all that good stuff, but none of that's happening yet. Okay. This is our first hand. Now, we have to get it to move three times, so we'll see if we can do that. And this, and it does use different skills. Like it uses, like this one requires two empathy to, to activate. Uh, this one requires a caution, and this one requires a spirituality. So you can see that it's basically relying on your more mental traits, which is why I picked her to go there. So we're going to take one. I'll cut it again just to be sure. Two and three. There we go. Now, uh, these are going to be her three cards to start with. Let's take a look at these. So we have Sweet Lies. We could lie to the guy. Um, it doesn't really do much for us. I mean, it does give us an activation here. Plus, we'll gain two charges. Then we can pay one charge to remove a time token from a chosen card in the sequence. Because, mm. see, you know, these cards don't have that thing that pushes it to the middle. They go right here. They connect, like... See, it doesn't go like that. It connects right here, right? But what do we want to do? Because we also want to be able to continue on if possible. Oh, I see. No, that's not a good option. Or is it? Let's see. It is a good option. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Yeah, we are going to play this one first right here. Oh, that's not going to be a good option, is it? Oh, yeah, it'll be fine. No, yeah, it'll, it'll be fine, I think. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Because um, I don't think this is going to line up, is it? Let me just look so I can be sure. I guess it will, right? It will line up for an extra thing. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, here's how this, this is going to play out. We're going to play this card, uh, Gather Clues. So we're trying to gather some information from this um, guard, right? Now, as you can see, it has a symbol here that, that has that little... Uh, Fleur de Lis type icon, and that is also right there. Now, there's I only have to win one thing on here. There's sometimes there's multiple stages to this. It says, uh, you know, varying bonuses. So each of these symbols represents a bonus. Well, this resembles up one on the track, right? So this one is going to go up here, and that means we gain one just for doing that. Okay. Now we also then gain a card because we always get this free thing down there. So we're going to gain a second card. Uh, and then it's, wow, good, this is a really good, potentially good card for us. This is a, a misdirection. I don't know if we're going to use this card yet, but we'll see. Because we got to beat him quickly. Let's, But we'll see if we can do that or not. Okay. So, um, 
this is not a violent encounter, so we're not going to lose. The only thing we could potentially lose is some reputation. So I don't know if we're going to keep playing yet or not. We'll see. Let's go through this and see what this says. Gain a charge. Okay. On entry, it gains a charge. Okay. We can remove a charge for each charge removed. Uh, for all charges, remove all charges for each charge removed. Um, we can gain another bonus on that, but I, I, we're going to have to wait for that. So... I was looking at this just to be sure, and it says that we can, in this Gather Clues card, we can pay, uh, we can expend that charge anytime we want, so I don't see why we wouldn't immediately expend it and move it up again. It doesn't say you have to wait. It says you can expend it at any time. I don't know why you'd wait unless there's unless you were saving it. Well, actually, you could save it for like the next segment if you wanted to. Because like I said, this, this card's never going to go away. Now, the question of the day is, can I play another card? Well, I can, in fact, play another card. Um, and I think I will because it's going to win us the scenario. I'm going to play this. Mm, I don't know if I want to play that one. I think I have another one I can play that will do the same thing. Yeah, without detriment. Because they're all going to get sent back anyway. Yeah, so here's what we're going to do. Now I have a times one here. I only need to do one more to win, right? So I think I'm going to play um, Sweet Lies. It says gain two charges, pay one charge to remove a time token from the card in the sequence, but I'm not going to worry about that. I just have to connect these two. Wait, that's not a lightning bolt. That's a plus. I can't do that. Oh, bummer. Um, I thought that was a lightning bolt for a second, and I can't connect the light. I can't connect them. I can do the missed direction, but it says if I... What's that symbol mean? I forgot what the little breaking card means. It says discard the last card from the sequence. Oh, if I discard the last... If I discard this... I... Oh, if discard go down and lose one rep. Well, we're not going to do that because we're not going to have to discard anything, right? We're just going to play that. Uh, and if I read that right, it says, yeah, that says discard the last card in the sequence. It says if we discard the last card in the sequence, we lose, uh, we go down one and lose a reputation because we misdirected the guy. But we're going to win, and I'll tell you why we're going to win, because I only need one more to win. You can see that we've connected this and this, which I have. Uh, you can see her side of the board here. We have one caution. That's caution. We could connect it. And then for this, we're going to go up one time here, which is one more up on the track. And we won our diplomatic negotiation with this guard. Now, again, this is a basic card that teaches us how to play. So we, we did the first section. And we get the reward, which is plus one rep. I'll just take this token. And we will, of course, follow the sequence of play. So we played our two cards. We connected them. Uh, we, the enemy response... Resolve the response in the encounter card, but see it says here we do an affinity check. Well, we had our affinity at the top. It says affinity track. I'll show you this up close. If a marker is on top during the affinity check, you win. So we won before we had to do the enemy response. So we didn't have to worry about that. The any enemy response would have been simply to push the token back down one. Like I said, this is only bad if we go all the way to the bottom. Um, and then we check readiness, but we're good. We're we're done because we won. We completed this. So affinity check. If the marker on the affinity track is at the if the, it's at the top slot, go directly to check readiness step. So check readiness. If each party member has been activated, go to phase three and turn. If not, go back to the phase one. Discard. Draw next turn. We don't have to draw next turn because it was the last stage. You win the encounter. That means we get one reputation. So she's got two reputation now. Uh, we uh, defeated, we negotiated well with the guard. That is going to be the end of our turn, and this card is going, these two cards are going to be discarded and put back in, along with the other cards in her diplomacy deck that we had, which was I for detail and Sweet Lies. Now, we didn't use those, so that's okay. But that is going to be the end of her encounter there, and her reward was that one reputation. So hopefully that pays off for her later. We'll see. And she had to encounter it anyway, but that is the end of that. Yeah, well, that was a lot of action. Um, gone around, and everybody's done a thing. But uh, I think, even though we have a couple people who are going to take more actions, I think this is going to be a long episode. So I, I haven't been able to tell how long we've been recording. Exactly, i got to look at it. But I think we're going to stop there. We'll finish, we'll finish our uh, day in the next episode. And we'll see how things roll out. So far, we're, we're doing, of course, very basic encounters. But we're doing pretty good. Uh, we did encounter our first quest and our first mission. We're trying to figure out um, uh, the secrets, this druidic ritual to uh, help our many out. But uh, what we're going to do uh, now is, I think we're just going to wait. i got a couple energy to burn with Bior and Aaliyah still. 
and I think uh, Bjorn's probably going to head back home because then he'll be he'll be kind of dried up by the time he gets back. Maybe he'll get back and do the uh, chores and gain a rep in the town. We'll see. He doesn't have any reputations. So that wouldn't be terrible for him. Uh, though he, if he can gain one experience, that'd be really good for him. So I think he's going to he's the one that's going to head up to that warrior fair at some point because he's already got he started the game with one experience. Or he got one experience from something. I'm not sure which. Probably started one of his game start things, right? I'm just going to double check in case I didn't make a mistake. Why does he have an experience? Oh, well. Um, he does. Maybe it's from his... I don't know. We'll see. Oh, because of the thing he did. Yeah, right, right. For the... Uh, all the party members got an experience when he did the... Uh, got the the trait of uh, Riddle of Old Steel. And he's got the hammer, too. So, all right, we're going to end it there. We'll finish our um, day phase next episode, and we'll go to the end of the day. We'll do rest actions, and then we'll go back around. As you can see, there's a, there's a lot that goes on in this game. It's It says it takes about an hour per chapter, but I don't know. It seems like it would take longer than that to me, uh, especially when you get into encounters and fights, because those can be real kind of thinky, as you can see. But anyway, I'll see you in the next episode, guys. So I hope you enjoy our playthrough of, of Tainted Grail. Um, and uh, I'll kind of recap cap the story as we go along with it as well, because this really is about the story. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, I don't know if it's going to bounce back on that Bjorn stole that hammer, but I'm sure it'll have consequences. Anyway, guys, thanks. I'll talk to you in the next episode, and I hope you enjoy. Bye.